Hello, welcome to the Tomorrow Biostasis channel. Remember to subscribe. Today we will talk about immortality. Humanity has been trying to fight diseases, save lives and achieve immortality for centuries. Today we haven't yet managed to overcome death, but it may be achievable. So let's start with why are humans interested in immortality? The most obvious reason is that as human beings we are instinctively afraid of dying. This fear of death has a simple explanation. We're afraid of something we don't know. Nobody ever came back from death to tell us how it feels or what we will have to face. But there may be other reasons why people would want to live longer. Love for life or interest in what will come next may move people to try to extend their life. Many of us wish to see what society will be like in 100 or 1000 years. But what is stopping us from becoming immortal? Our body is made up of billions of cells which die every day and are replaced by new cells. When we're young, we can easily replace these cells. When we age, it gets harder. Different types of damage pile up over the years and our repair mechanisms become less effective. These processes, along with many others, lead our body to decay. According to recent studies, the human body has a natural absolute limit of 150 years. Around this age, our system will no longer have the ability to recover on its own from stresses like illnesses and injury, resulting in imminent death. This is where medical technology has to come in, shifting this absolute limit and propping our vital function, extending human life for an unlimited time. Let's now have a look at how we could be able to achieve immortality. According to current scientific knowledge, there are three options, biological, cybernetic and virtual immortality. Biological immortality happens when an organism is not affected by cellular senescence. This means that the cells of the body don't age and can divide indefinitely. An example of such an organism is the so-called immortal jellyfish. The life cycle of these jellyfish is very interesting. While their cells do age, they can also rejuvenate when needed. Human cells, on the other hand, are much more complex than those of a jellyfish and are designed to perform and specialize on multiple tasks. When they specialize, they lose their ability to divide indefinitely. They can still divide for a limited number of times and then they die or become senescent. To achieve human biological immortality, we have to find a way to reverse the mechanism of aging and death built inside our cells. Though this first option still doesn't make us resistant to external damages such as accidents, wounds or diseases. This is where cybernetic immortality comes in, replacing the vulnerable system of the human body, like the nervous, respiratory and muscle system, with technological components that are immune to biological death or decay. The idea behind cybernetic immortality is that our body can survive a partial or even complete change of the material from which it is built. Even though there are still not many examples of electronic devices blended with a human body, they hold great potential. One real-life example of a human cyborg is Neil Harbison, a Spanish-British-Irish artist. He lives with a software implemented in his brain, which is connected to an antenna hovering above his head. This device allows him to hear wavelengths of light that are normally invisible to the human eye. Not only has he found a possible solution for his color blindness, he is now able to experience colors behind normal human perception. The third option is the so-called virtual immortality. Virtual immortality is based on the concept of mind uploading, which is the hypothetical process of transferring the mental structure and consciousness of a person to an external computer. The mind could then connect to a cybernetic avatar and control it as if it is a human body. In this case, the avatar does not age and if it gets damaged, the mind can be uploaded to a newer and better computer. But how far are we from actually uploading someone's consciousness? Well, scientists have already managed to blow the mind of a worm in a Lego robot by mapping its nervous system. The robot, once connected to the worm brain structure, started behaving just like a worm. Though a worm's nervous system is formed of 32 cells, whereas a human brain consists of 86 billion neurons, which means that we still have a lot of development to do until our human mind can be uploaded. Then there is also the question, is the uploaded mind really you? We we'll leave it to you to answer this question. Options for immortality exist. Now, how long before we reach them? Dr. Ian Persson, a UK-renowned futurologist, thinks that immortality is just around the corner. 
He claims that once we reach technological singularity, a hypothetical point in time at which technological growth becomes uncontrollable and irreversible, reaching immortality will be inevitable. It is believed that at some point in the future, medical technology will advance so fast we will be able to outrun death one year at a time. Lastly, many people wonder if cryonics cryostasis will make us immortal. This is a common misconception. Biostasis' main goal is to save lives, treating diseases that are incurable today. When and if medical technology will be able to revive you, there is also a good chance that future society will have achieved immortality already. Therefore, there is a chance that people who choose cryopreservation could achieve immortality. However, for now, this is just speculation. At Tomorrow Biostasis, we offer a service that gives you a chance to extend your lifespan and possibly treat your illnesses in the future. While immortality is not our final goal, we believe that people should be able to choose for how long they want to live. What is your opinion about immortality? Feel free to let us know in the comment section below. Thank you for watching. Subscribe and see you tomorrow.